Hello everyone, so today we'll be looking at the explanations for forgetting retrieval failure and following along with the AQA psychology textbook for A-level year one and AF with the green haired girl on. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise. Your specification point is explanations for forgetting retrieval failure due to absence of cues. So if a question said explanations for forgetting or of forgetting, this includes both interference theory and retrieval failure. Know that explanations is broad, it applies to both. Unless the question specifically says it wants interference theory or retrieval failure. So, retrieval failure theory. Why is it that we forget? Now, according to this particular theory, it is because when we try to recall information, there are insufficient cues. So when information is placed in our memory, there are cues associated with it that we store at the time. And if those cues are not available at retrieval, it may appear as though you have forgotten the information. So without the cues, we cannot access our memories that are available, but only when certain cues are present that you coded at the time. So when learning, if you were in a classroom, the cue of the classroom and what was around you, this theory argues was coded at the same time as you learned that piece of information. So there's this concept of the encoding specificity principle. So what that states is that recall is best when there's a large overlap between the information available at the time of retrieval, so it's the cues around us, and the information in the memory trace, what you learned at the time. If the cues available at encoding and retrieval are different, there will be some forgetting. So if you're learning in some sort of classroom and then you go and recall it outside there might be some forgetting because you've not got the same cues available so the cues are coded at the time of learning but not in a meaningful way so we've got two different types of cues we've got context dependent forgetting so that's external so that's change of environments and then we've got state dependent forgetting internal cues. So that's like a physiological change. So for the context dependent forgetting, we have this study by Godden and Badley, 1975, and it's the sea diver study. So the divers learned a list of words, either underwater or on land, and were then asked to recall the words, either underwater or on land. So what this did is it created four different conditions. So learn on land, recall on land, learn on land, recall underwater, learn underwater, recall on land, learn underwater, recall underwater. And in two of these conditions, the learning environment and recall environment matched. So you can see that learn on land and recall on land is the same, and the learn underwater and recall underwater is the same. So the accurate recall was 40% lower in non-matching conditions. So your learn underwater recall on land is a different condition. It was 40% lower compared to when you did it in the same environment. So this was because the external cues were different at learning and recalling. So that supports this context dependent forgetting. So we now have state dependent forgetting. And the textbook talks about Carter and Cassidy from 1998, who gave their participants antihistamine drugs. So these are drugs that are used to relieve the symptoms of hay fever to their participants. And these had a mild sedative effect. So it made the participants slightly drowsy. And what that does is it creates a physiological state that is different from the normal state of being awake and alert. So the participants had to learn a list of words and passages and then recall the information. So this created four conditions. So it's learn on drug, recall on drug, learn on drug, recall not on it, learn not on drug, recall not on it, and learn not on drug, recall on it. So in participants where there was a mismatch between internal state at learning and recall, performance was significantly worse in terms of recalling the lists. So the learn on drug and recall not on it, that they did worse in that 
condition. So when the cues are absent, there is more forgetting, and that supports that state-dependent forgetting. So we'll now look at our evaluation. Our first evaluation point is a strength. There is supporting evidence from Godden and Badley and Carter and Cassidy, which we've just looked at. Isenk, who is a cognitive psychologist, also suggests that retrieval failure is probably the main reason for forgetting in long term memory. And we have this wealth of supporting evidence which increases the validity of the explanation. So it's especially true when evidence occurs in real life situations outside the lab. So we have that example of the deep sea divers, it's outside the lab. So a limitation is questioning context effects. Now, Badley comes along and suggests that in terms of different contexts, it's very hard to find an environment as different from land as underwater. And the majority of us are on land. We, the, is you can't really find a different environment to that. So rooms are fairly similar. We shouldn't really see that much difference in forgetting. We shouldn't forget that much. It's unlikely because you learn something in one room and recall in another. The environments are generally not enough to show a difference in forgetting. So it is a limitation because it means real life applications of retrieval failure due to contextual cues don't actually explain that much forgetting. A further limitation is recall versus recognition. So context effect may be related to the kind of memory being tested. So Garden and Badley replicated their underwater study, but this time they used a recognition test instead of free recall. So the participants had to say whether they recognised a word instead of retrieving it for themselves. So when testing recognition, there was no context dependent effect. So the performance was the same in all four conditions and it's a limitation as it means the presence, absence of cues only affects memory if you test it in a certain way. Further limitations that we have this problem with the encoding specificity principle. So it cannot be tested this and when a cue produces a successful recall we can only assume that the cue was present at the time of learning. We don't know if it was or not. And if a cue doesn't result in a successful recall, we assume it wasn't present. But this is just simply an assumption. We aren't entirely sure. We can't test it. There's no way to establish whether that cue was present at encoding. So it's impossible to test it. So it means it's impossible to show it's false. And that can lead to a circular argument. And that is just not scientific. We're just not sure. But ultimately, this doesn't actually mean we should abandon it because it has this explained a huge amount and variety of research relating to forgetting. And it's drawn attention to the importance of context related and state related cues. A further strength is real life applications. So Badly suggests that it is worth paying attention to context cues, even though they're not that strong. So if you think about when you walk up the stairs, and you get to the top of the stairs and you think, well, why have I just come up here? I've completely forgotten. And then you go back downstairs, go into that room that you were in, and then you remember. So it does have some kind of real life application because we can help people remember things more accurately, potentially by using this retrieval failure. So, for example, we can look at advice based on explanations which could help people perform better in exams and avoid age related memory losses and also help the police catch more criminals. So I've just had a look through the past papers. This is from an AS paper one from June 2018. Toby and Sarah both studied AS psychology at the same school. Toby's class was taught in the school lecture theatre, while Sarah's class had their lessons in a science classroom. Both students set their final exam in the school lecture theatre. Which student is likely to perform worse in their final psychology exam? Use your knowledge of explanations of forgetting to justify your answer. So hopefully you can see there that because Toby's class was in the school lecture theatre, he should do better in his psychology exam because the exam is in the school lecture theatre. And you need to apply here the retrieval theory explanation of forgetting. 
So if we have a look at your mark scheme, you can see that it's all AO2 marks. It's four marks for AO2. You need to clearly state that Sarah will perform worse. That will get you one mark just for putting that. And you need to justify it. And it gives you possible content for explanation. And make sure you are relating back to that stem, the item, because that is your guide. That will help you and form your ideas. Another exam question is from an A-level paper one from June 2018. Aaron was upset as he left the Spanish exam. In the unfamiliar room and full of nerves, his mind had gone completely blank. He was regretting studying both French and Spanish because he was sure he had mixed up lots of the words. Outline one explanation of forgetting. How might this explanation account for Aaron's poor performance in the Spanish exam? So. In terms of this, you need to be carefully scanning through that item. It's wanting only one explanation of forgetting. So you can talk about retrieval failure or interference theory. So the first bit, which states that he is in an unfamiliar room and full of nerves, that is your retrieval failure. He's not in the same room as where he learnt the Spanish stuff originally, and he's full of nerves. He's got a different physiological state but you could talk about interference theory because he was studying both French and Spanish at the same time and mixing up words. Make sure you're replying to Aaron. How might this explanation account for Aaron's poor performance? Make sure you are referring to that. Here is your mark scheme, your guidance. You only need to mention one of these and look at the possible applications to Aaron because this will help if another sort of application question comes up in the future. So this is question number nine. We've just looked at eight. This was a follow on question from your question eight where you just had to talk about Aaron. This tricked a lot of students because students didn't realise they were then going to have to evaluate whichever explanation they had just chosen for the Aaron question. So you need to make sure you're checking ahead to see if there is a follow on question because you need to be confident that you have evaluation for it. If you've just chosen interference theory and then think, ah, I can't think of any evaluation, that's no good. You're going to lose time and you won't have enough time to do that. So pick one you're confident with and make sure you can evaluate it. If we look at the mark scheme, you can have your retrieval failure, they're your possible evaluation points or interference, possible evaluation points. But look at the bottom of here, it says note. If the explanation evaluated is not the explanation outlined in question eight, no credit. You have to be very careful when reading these questions and really pick out. They tend to put things in bold for you, but really make sure you're focusing on what is being asked. It has to relate to your question eight. OK, thank you for listening. I hope that helps and best of luck with the rest of your revision.